Hello there, my name is Jonathan and these are Jonathan's Days. This is my little place where I share all of the things that I miss while I live my life here in London. Uh, if you're new here, I'm from Ireland, but I live in the UK. I've been knitting for oh, 10 years or so and knitting super hard the last year. Uh, you'll have just seen, hopefully, everything that I've knit in 2021, which was my previous video that I uploaded. And we're back with a normal episode. This is episode 11, I believe, and it's the first proper episode of 2022. And we have a lot to talk about because it has been a hot minute since I've posted. So I think it's been probably about a month, if not a little bit longer, since I posted something. So I hope you're well. I hope you've been, you know, taking care of yourself and I hope you are sitting comfortably because we have a lot to get through so we're going to be like snappy about it. It's a couple of finished objects, a couple of whips and a lot of acquisitions because I've been traveling and I've picked up a few things along the way on those travels so I want to share that with you and share what I've been getting up to since then. So let's start with finished objects. The first one that I probably should mention is the single malt sweater. I'll pop up a picture. If you've just watched the 2021 video, um, you'll have seen it so you kind of know my thoughts on it and I know a lot of people are waiting to hear what I thought about it. Spoiler alert, I loved it! So you, if you do follow me on Instagram or Ravelry, you'll have seen all the photos and that I took when I was over in the States in the snow with the single malt on and you'll know that I really really loved it. Um, it's also, I think Max made it like a featured picture on the like design profile so if you actually like scroll through on the main design page for the single malt you'll see my version of it which was knit in the Louis Shade color of Dyed by Dell's British Iron which is the recommended yarn in the pattern and I absolutely love the pattern, I love the yarn, I'm wearing it all the time, I literally can't say enough about it, so if you were thinking about making it for yourself or for someone in your life, just go do it, you're not going to be disappointed. I've yet to meet anyone who doesn't love the pattern and I feel like it's a wardrobe staple that you can just wear time and time again. I would love to make another one at some point in my future. I'd love to I think it would be great in cream and like a natural color with the texture kind of giving that like fisherman's vibe. So yeah, I can't recommend it enough. So that would be technically my first finished object since the last time I saw you, if we're doing it in time. The next finished object would have been my Curio socks, which I don't think I'd finished the last time I podcasted. I'm currently wearing them and there you go, that's one. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I um, spoke about them. I don't, maybe I hadn't finished the heel at that point. I think it was pretty close to being done and so it was my first time doing an afterthought heel uh, which I really really enjoyed. So it was uh, it, the pattern is the Curio Socks by Andrew Maori, by the way. I made mine in the recommended yarns which is Mondeem and Spin Cycle and I have already cast on my next pair which is what I think I mentioned in the previous episode that I had just literally gone and bought the yarn for another pair because I love them so much and this is very true so this is like an FO plus a whip so the previous pair I'm currently wearing I'll pop up a nice picture of them finished since they're kind of on my feet now and I've worn them a bunch but they are the, the I love the pattern and I won't stop waffling on about it if you've been watching previous episodes then you've seen it, but this is the second pair. I'm gonna get my eyes out of the ca camera. Again, this is made in Mon Demon Spin Cycle, which are the recommended yarns. Uh, I've put in my waist yarn there to put in the heel. I really enjoyed the Afterthought heel. Um, it was a little bit difficult picking up the stitches even with the waist yarn. Um, in a episode, I think the most recent episode of Andrea Mowry's I'll Knit If I Want To, um, YouTube series she talks that she uses embroidery floss for uh, lifelines and I think it also could be quite useful for like things like this like an afterthought heel so I think I might pick up some of that because at the moment I'm just using some like this is some super wash waist jam which is pretty smooth but I, it does it is difficult to pick up stitches as you go I'll show you the two colors 
here. So this is the Mondeem. This is the color 300, and I love this color. Like, I want a jumper in this color. It's, I guess, I think it's a natural. It must be a natural color. Um, yeah, made in Portugal. So maybe I'll try and get to Portugal this year and visit the real store. And then this is the Spin Cycle. This is in the color Robin's Egg, which is just epic, isn't it? I love it. And it's knitting up so great. So it started like really, really natural. And then now we're kind of getting into the, into the, the blues. So it's super, super exciting. So yeah, it's like, <clears throat> if you don't know me, you know that I always have a sock on the go and usually it's like a pretty vanilla sock so that I don't have to, um, be too focused on it because I knit on my lunchtime at work. And the Curio is just a wonderful way to have it be kind of like vanilla plus. So there's some bit of interest, but it's not so difficult that I have to think about it. And I really enjoy the color changing yarn because it's just, you know, gives you a bit of interest as you go. But I think, and it's like a pattern that would be amazing if you got like variegated, like it doesn't necessarily be like, needs to be a color changing yarn. Like the spin cycle could just be a variegated yarn plus a solid yarn. And I think it would make like a really, really interesting pattern. And yeah, so I love it. It's uh, a pattern I'll do again and again. I think they're super comfortable and like the socks are like sisters, like they don't match exactly. Maybe even cousins. <clears throat> and I keep mine, this is my Hyden Hammer number eight knitting bag. And I have a lot of these as you'll see as we go on because I can't stop buying these bags. And it's really bad because the more bags I buy, the more projects I cast on and put into it. So anyway, so that would be my second finished object is the Curio socks and it's also a whip. So I love them, highly recommend. Then the next finished object I probably should have spoken about right away because I'm wearing it. You're like, Jalen, what are you wearing? I am wearing the Yesteryears sweater. This is from the book. I have the book here. <clears throat> this is from the book Worsted, which is by Lina Publishing of Lina Magazine. And it is the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, there you go. Ta-da, here's my one. It's actually the same color here as the color I have here. Um, so this was my, I spoke about it in the previous episode. I went and got the yarn and I got the book. And this was my Christmas Eve cast on, which was very fitting because it's Max's birthday. It's the 24th of December. So happy birthday once again to Max. And I felt it was very fitting to cast on one of his patterns on that day. And I finished this so I cast it on the 24th, so I just arrived in Ireland and I knit, knit, knit all the way through and I finished it when I got back. So I finished this in about two weeks, just over two weeks, uh, because it was a lot of planes, trains and automobiles, so there was just a lot of time and a lot of family time. Like, you know, my, my trip was never meant as a, you know, be a tourist, go crazy. My trip was spending time with family family I had, hadn't seen for years, and family I had never met, like my niece. So um, it was just a lot of sitting around, hanging out and spending time with your family, which meant a lot of knitting time. So I'm gonna move a bit closer so you can see. This is it. It is knit up in the La Bienne Aimé Cori Worsted, and the colors are, ooh, it's kind of blowing out there a little bit, and the colors are Payne's Grey and Rust. The, uh, it's top down. What else can I say about it? Top down color work. I love that I knit the third size. I tend to knit the size three in Max's patterns, which is like 40-ish inches chest. And, uh, cause I like mine quite fitted. Um, I'm trying to think. It's pretty, it's a pretty simple design. Once you're kind of done with the color work, it's straight stockinette down. There's just some decreases on the arms. I'm gonna get up close there so you can see the yarn a bit better. Uh, it's quite, wait, stand up. It's like quite tonal, which is nice. I didn't alternate skeins or anything, so I'm kind of hoping it's not obvious. I don't think, I don't think it, you can tell that there's any difference, really any difference in color because it's a hand dyed yarn. Uh, the Cory Worsted in general, it's, it's so hard to describe because it is like soft, it's got kind of like a, like a bit of a halo texture, 
with a kind of the tiniest bit of a rustic bite, I, I guess. I'm not sensitive to scratchy yarn, so I can't really advise a lot. Like, you know, someone might find this extremely scratchy. I really, really don't. I find it to be very, very soft and very, like, natural. Like, you can sense the sheep in it, which is wonderful. It's super cozy. Like, yeah. And I love the design. I, I deliberately went for a low contrast because the color work was so graphic. I wanted a low contrast so that it kind of like tricks your eye almost and I think I quite achieved that with this and I really enjoyed it. I knit colour work two-handed so it is continental in one and English style in the other hand so my left hold one yarn and left one yarn and right. I had the grey be the dominant colour um, which I think, yeah, I think that that's what I wanted. I wanted the grey to kind of pop out a bit more. Um, so I believe, yeah, so the yarn in your left hand is your dominant and right is your non-dominant colour in colour work, in colour work dominance, which I'm still pretty new at because this was my first ever colour work sweater. Uh, I've this is my third colour work pattern overall. So I had the middens, I had the cowl, and then this. And so I've like really, really enjoyed it. It was very, I guess, potato chippy. Like I really wanted to get to the, to the, like through the yoke and then just bla like blast through the stockinette. Part of that was also because like I knew I'd be flying. So on the plane, I wanted to be sure that I was on, like, I didn't want to be doing colour work on a, on a plane. In the end, I did end up doing colour work on a plane, which was interesting, but I was very lucky that the seat next to me was empty so that I had, like, space to kind of, you know, be <laughs> the knitter with two balls of yarn on the plane for six or seven hours, however long my flight was. And I actually knit the entire flight from Ireland, well, from Amsterdam to Minneapolis, where I was travelling. And... This is a good point to stop and say thank you to everyone who gave me tips about carrying knitting on the plane. I had absolutely no problems at all. No one looked twice at them or stopped or questioned them at all. The best tips I got, which I, I used almost every tip that everyone gave me, I like took advantage of. So one of the best ones ever, because well, I use interchangeables, was to take the tips off, put on stoppers, which I'll show you stopper, the stoppers I got in a second and to put them in a pencil case so when the needles are in like when it goes, goes to the x-ray machine with other pens and stuff it just looks like a pen essentially so i did that i also did what else did i do oh i got some bamboo tips as well just in case they took the tips away from me i would have the bamboo ones i assumed that they would have kept they would have allowed the bamboo versus not allowing metal tips and then the third thing that people recommended, which I didn't do, was to bring like a stamped envelope so that if they do take them off that you can mail it back to yourself. Um, I didn't do that because I had five different flights over the course of 10 days and all in different countries, more or less. So it just wasn't feasible for me to kind of have a stamped envelope for so many different places. And if um, <clears throat> if I did end up doing that I think it would have just you know can you imagine being at the top of a queue at Christmas to fly somewhere and then have to take all your stuff to find a letterbox to post your needles it would have just been too much at that point it would have just been like just take them so yeah so thank you for all your tips tips about my tips my needle tips haha <laughs> uh, thank you for all that from the last episode I was nervous getting on especially the longer like a shorter flight it was fine I used my I had my socks but for the long flights, I was like, this is the perfect time to get like a color work yoke sweater done. So I was glad that I didn't have any drama and I was, it meant I, you know, for the new year, I cast off this wonderful sweater and this wonderful yarn. And yeah, it was great. So that's more or less it on the yesteryears. I really love it. I've been wearing it a ton. The Cory Worsted is fabulous. And this book is wonderful too. I highly recommend all of them. The only thing I will say is that it doesn't, it feels like a light worsted to me, uh, is probably what I would say about it. And it is extremely expensive. 
as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I'm mean, not as far as I'm concerned. It is very expensive, but if you want to, if you have the means and you want it, or if you want to treat yourself, I don't think you'll be disappointed. I think it's wonderful, wonderful yarn. And the colors are, the colors are out of this world. This is my first time knitting with Labby Enemy yarn. So I, you know, I was blown away by the colors and I think I will continue to be as I, as I were. And I'm doing this like thing where I'm like puffing out my chest to show you the color work. But yeah, I, I love it. I hope you like it too, guys. And um, yeah, more Lab Enemy and, and another, I haven't picked what pattern I'm gonna do yet, next yet. I'm thinking it might be the entire, oh my God, did I open it on the exact right page? Yeah, yeah, I did. It might be the Amina. Uh, just the cowl to help me learn some uh, intarsia, not the um, not the sweater, just the cowl. It's by Sylvia Watts Cherry. Let's see if I can find a picture of the cowl. There you go. So this is the jumper, the sweater, and then that's the cowl. And Sylvia Watts Cherry is a um, a London-based knitwear designer. So we love that. So yeah. I think that will be the next pattern I do from the book. I probably won't do it in the worsted yarn because this cowl is three, four, four, maybe five colors. And even though I do have a small bit of this left over from the size three that I knit, uh, I'm not sure if it will be enough. And yeah, it might end up being a scrappy project just because I don't think I could justify buying entire skeins of it for a cowl. So, so yeah, so that is the Yesteryears by Max, knit in the Quarry Worsted by Lab Enemy, from the book by Lana Publishing, which is wonderful. So, is that all my FOs? Oh, one more FO to mention is, uh, I did mention on the episode what I had some Madeline Tosh DK that I was making a gift, I didn't mention what it was, and I can put up a picture but the finished object was the school run headband by Penrose Knits, AKA Laura from The Knitting Pickle. And it was my first time knitting up one of Laura's patterns and it was just chef's kiss. I absolutely loved it. I loved making it. It was my first time doing a Pico Edge. It was my first time doing mattress stitch and the, the design and pattern was just like perfect for a gift knit. I made two, I made one in the toddler size and I made one in the adult small size for my little niece and for my sister-in-law. So they had a matching headband and they absolutely loved it. Well, my sister-in-law loved it. My niece is one years old, so, <laughs> so she doesn't, you know, I don't know what her, her opinion is on it yet, but um, it was such a joy to knit and I was, you know, sewing them up on Christmas day with my family and then I brought them over to the States to uh, to gift my sister-in-law and to my niece. So it was really, really wonderful. And I just, I don't know, it felt really great to be supporting someone I know to be an amazing mom and giving them to my sister who's also an amazing mom. So I just kind of like, you know, I don't know, it was just like a nice connection and I consider Laura a friend. So it was great to support her and to, um, make something wonderful by her. So if you haven't knit any of Laura's patterns or you don't know Laura, I'm sure you do if you know me, I highly recommend checking her out, her podcast. She did an amazing Vlogmas and she's a kick-ass designer. So, you know, I can, I just see such a bright future for her that she's, and she's already like killing it. So yeah, so the school run headband, the whole school run collection I'm sure is fantastic. I only got the headband, but they're like perfect gift knits and they're just, written so well. So yeah, that was my other finished object from the last episode that I was kind of, I don't know why I was like keeping it a secret and a surprise from you guys, but, um, but yeah, so highly recommend that. And I think that's all my FOs. Yeah. The socks, the sweaters. And so now we can jump into whips, one you've already seen, which is the Curio socks. And the next whip is ooh, in my my knitting bag, which I'm, I'm going to show you this. Oh, that's a little tin. Um, this is what I keep whatever project kind of lives at home in. This is by Carhartt. It's like a tool bag. And it's got all my, like, mostly they're Max and Vincent's pins. So these are the pins. Oh my goodness. These are from the Mysterious Sock Collection, or the Mysterious Forest Sock Collection. 
So that's the all three of them. And they, I'll, sh I'll show you the skeins later on. These are all my pins. So this is the A Yarn Story one from A Yarn Story in Bath. So that's Peach's the dog. That's Max Vincent. That's the Highland Koo wearing the Boaster on. And this is the goat wearing the Hide and Peak, which is my one of my next cast-ons. And then over here, this is their Pride Month. Uh, this is the Jackalope one. And then this I actually picked up in a yarn store in uh, a Yarnify in Chicago, which is a little rainbow swatch, which I thought was really cute. So that's my yarn bag. So that's what my next whip is living in. And I'm actually going to, oh God, am I gonna pull this out? I'm gonna pull it out. I'm gonna live on camera me pulling out stitches. Uh, so I was in the middle of picking up a neckband. Hold on. On this. It's almost done. Oh god. And full disclosure guys, I have duct taped my needle. And I will show you <laughs> that I've duct taped my needle. So this is my Addy. I use Addy Clicks and they have a spring inside the needle. And one of my tips, I think, is missing the spring, and so I'm, I've am i duct taped it together for the time being. And I'm going to rip this out because I was picking up for the neck. And I don't know about you guys, but when I pick up for the neck of things, I have to do it like a couple of times before I... You know, they're like, pick up this many stitches, and then it ends up not being enough or it ends up being too much. Like, I wish they'd tell you, like, pick up two stitches per whatever, but... I digress. I'm going to digress again just to show you the. What, this is what I had left over from the yesteryears. So I had a, a decent amount of the Payne's Grey, and this is the rust. So this is this is all I had left from the um, the yesteryears. Which band is this? This is the band I want. Okay, so the ne the first whip. You can. Do you, is your yarn bag like a like a trash bag as well? Like you throw everything in there because that's definitely what. Definitely what mine is. I'll put this down. God. So, the next whip is from the latest issue of Linda Magazine. And it is, I think I posted this on my Instagram and a lot of people guessed what it was. It is the Cassis, Cassis, I don't know how you pronounce this. And it is by Midori Hirose, who of Ranunculus fame, you know, she designed the Ranunculus. Uh, she's a Japanese knitwear designer based in Germany, and so this would be the second uh, design by her that I would have knit. I am knitting it in La Bien Aime. Well, this is uh, Dirarum Natura Gilead uh, dyed by La Bien Aime. So you can get this yarn. There you go. This is the Jonna color, J O N N A which is funny. Oh yeah, so it's Gilead Heathered. Let's see if this will focus. Yeah. Gilead Heathered by La Bionime, hand dyed in Paris. This is obviously it's gained up. This is my first time using any yarn by this company. I really, really like it. I need to do a bit of research. It feels woolen spun almost, but I'm. it looks worsted spun, but it feels it feels well uh, so it's like pretty pretty lightweight it is like a deep tonal green and it's definitely Jonah right yeah j-o-n-n-a i thought it was joanna when i first got it but then it's Jonah, which i find really funny because my italian friends call me Jonah. which is funny anyway god he's full of chat today isn't he so this is the progress i've made so far with the color kind of sorted itself out there you go God, you can really see the tonality when it blows out like that. So, it is a slipover, a throwover, I don't know what people call it these days. And I have finished the yoke, essentially, and the sleeves, the sleeves are just like little, you just pick up a knit a little bit. And then I have a decent amount of the body done. I'm just, as you saw me pulling my needle out, I'm just, about to pick up the neck and then once the neck is done it kind of gives me a more not that the neck will pull it in a lot but it will just give me a more accurate read for the length on the body before I do the ribbing I'm 
Making the third size, there's options to do a roll neck version and you also split the hem of the ribbing, but I won't do that. I'll just do the just plain rib. Uh, the texture created is just fab and the construction is amazing. I really, really enjoyed it. This is knit on six millimeter needles and this is a worsted weight yarn. So, um, but it, as I was talking about the Cory worsted, it feels chunkier for sure, but it's super lightweight and I'm really excited to wear it. I cast this on because I wanted something that was kind of quick and a bit more easy is the wrong word, I guess quick, uh, to make a garment. That's why I did this before I cast on my next project, my next sweater project, which I will tell you about. But yeah, I'm really, really enjoying I'm loving it, actually. I'm not really, really enjoying it. I'm absolutely loving it. The construction is fantastic. You do the back flat, you knit over the shoulders, and then the front, and then down. So it's like you go down the back, over the shoulders, down the front, and down the sides. And the if you do make this, I, first of all, I highly recommend it. If you do make this, go to the Ravelry page and go to um, the blog of Midori Hirose. So it's in the magazine, but she has um, YouTube videos explaining every pattern and like every technique that she uses that are just no sound, just her very slowly doing the technique. So there is like a knit, knit back to front that she does slightly differently than what I do before. And it's wonderful, especially when something's in, like I always thought that when something's in a magazine that you don't kind of get the extras that you would with, get with like digital patterns on Ravelry but she has done that already, even though it's only in the magazine. Um, so definitely do that. It also explains the construction really well on her blog. So I would recommend both of those if you do make this pattern and I highly recommend it. I probably would make another one. I'm gonna see how it fits when it's actually finished and blocked, but I, I, I really, really love it. and I'm very excited about it. I, I think I quite like it in a gray, just, you know, straight from, uh, the Gilead, like, like I'm assuming La Bienname gets just the undyed natural version and dies over it. So I'd like to see Gilead's own color choice for this. But yeah, I really, really like, oh look, I'm, I'm like an Irish flag. Um, so, so yeah, so this is the Cassis from Lina Magazine, the latest issue, which is issue 13. Um, this is actually meant to be their, like, lots of gender neutral items. I don't kind of, I don't really believe in gender neutral clothing. All clothing is gender neutral. So, um, but yeah, this one really stood out to me. I, I just enjoyed the texture and the look of it. And I'm really, really excited to get it done. I'll probably get it done this weekend. So expect to see this being worn and a finished object in the next episode. So here it goes. That's it, the Cassis by Midori Hirose from the latest issue of Lina Magazine, made in Dararum Natura Gilead Dai by Labia Nami. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Cool, so that is all my whips. I will be finishing up the Cassis very soon, and then I think I'm gonna cast on two or three more items. I'm kind of in the, you know, I'll talk about what the plans are soon, but I'm kind of in the mood to have, with the podcast, I've really been focused on like, okay, one episode is a work in project, progress, the next episode it's a finished object. And because I shoot my episodes three weeks apart, that gives me a kind of like six weeks to finish something. And I have found that it does like, I'm putting this kind of unnecessary pressure on myself. And so because I've done so much garment knitting the past six months, I want to kind of cast on a shawl and a sweater at the same time and another hat and just kind of have these things that I can kind of like dip in and dip out of things. Uh, Generally, I'm quite a monogamous knitter, but I think at the beginning of the year now, I kind of want to cast on a few things and, you know, get through my stash a little bit because my stash is overflowing. And speaking of stash overflowing, let's move on to acquisitions. So, <laughs> the first thing I'm going to show you acquisition-wise, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have already seen, but I did pick up Cory Confetti. Um, I've already thought of the title of this episode. It's going to be La Bien Johnny, which is me, <laughs> because there's so much La Bien in me. And how could you not? So this is the Cory Confetti. This is the 
so they've just restocked this. So I think if you're watching this now, you could probably jump on and get some. It is freaking fabulous. Ugh, I love it. <laughs> I, I absolutely, I, it's funny. I do this thing when I get like new yarn that I really love, I put it in a bag so I can't look at it that much so that first of all, I resist casting on. And second of all, it's like still exciting and fun for me. And that's definitely how I feel pulling this out and showing you guys now. So it is a, let's see, let's, let's read the label dudes. Cora Confetti is a one of a kind limited edition yarn comprised of a mix of recycled and natural fiber, a uh, mix of recycled natural fibers that include upcycled Labienne Labie yarn and custom dyed Falkland Coriadale. So it's 50% Falkland Coriadale, 30% recycled fibers and 20% Labienne recycled threads. And it's just, it's everything. I know exactly what, oh, so the color is gray bow number one, fall, winter 2021. So there is more of this on uh, the website now currently, I believe. And I got five skeins. So for me, it's, which is a sweater, which is how many it took to make this, which is a sweater quantity. I think one or two people in the world who are in my Instagram DMs know what I'm gonna make with this. And I want it to be a surprise until I've got like a little bit of it done to reveal because this being released and the pattern I want to make being released were like at the same time. So I feel like it was like meant to be. And yeah, I'm very excited about it. It's a super fun, exciting yarn. And I love that like hand dyeing brands have these like recycled confetti yarns. I think they're super fun. Um, Hedgehog Fibers have Tweety as well and they have, they have a similar gray color and a black color. And I can see myself like getting the black in the future and making something with that. But for now it's the Cora Confetti and you know, it'll be, I mean, it's annoying. Like Pride is in, Pride is in the summer. So I'm not gonna really knit something or wear a sweater in Pride in the summer rainbow. But, you know, there's winter Pride all over the place. So that will be that. Um, so yeah, look forward to that. I think in a, in a couple, in a month or two, I'll probably be about ready to cast on the plan. And yeah, it'll be good. Uh, the next acquisition, we're gonna like, like move through them fairly quickly. This, okay, so this, if you've seen, you know. This is like, <laughs> this was announced on Instagram. And I literally got like pings of like notification, like people in comments were like, has Jonathan seen this? Oh my God, Jonathan's gonna lose it when he sees this, blah, 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 blah. And like, I consider these people friends and they didn't tell me. And I think they know why they didn't tell me because it's gonna be a surprise. But yeah, so here it is. Obviously I got it. Like, of course I got it. How could I not get it? It's wild. Like I had to get it, of course. I'm pretty sure I was probably the first one to like, Get it. So this, of course, is the Le Garçon Heidenhammer bag collaboration. Of course, I got it. This is, so there you go. That's the logo. This is the fabric, which is, of course, designed by Max. So that's Max and Vincent there. That's some yarn, some stitch markers, some tea, knitting needles, sparkles. And yeah, of course, I had to get it. There's no way I couldn't get it. It was... This was like designed and meant for me. Um, so yeah, this now brings, I have five <laughs> Iron Hammer bags and I didn't plan on getting five, but like, of course I, I have to get it. And currently this is housing my next, oh my God, if I can get it out, which I've mentioned on the podcast before, this is holding my Opus yarn for the Hide and Peak sweater. If you go back a couple of episodes, you'll see the swatch that I knit up for that. So that is going to be cast on as soon as the casus is um, off my needles. Oh God, this, the, 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 the leather does soften up. <laughs> I can confirm it does soften up, but this is still brand new. So yeah, this is the number three. Hide and Hammer bag, which is the larger version. So this is like the regular version in a, like a gray. So I've had this the longest, as you can see, this was a natural leather strap, which is like patinaed and aged beautifully. And this is the 
uh, Lego Snow one. They had the option of the this strap, which is yellow, or a black strap. So I went with yellow because all my other ones are yellow. So these are the eights, and then this is or this is the th three, and this is the eight. So it's the same design but just um, smaller. So this all my sweater projects go in this. And when I travel, which I did, I traveled with a hide and hammer bag, and people. Everyone sees them, like loves them. Like even non netters they're like, oh my God, I love this bag. I'm like, well, just get it because it's awesome. So I got that and I will keep the Leg Garcon, Garcon train running. And they so kindly sent me a little Christmas gift. So they sent me a little mini skein set of Bydell's yarn um, from the guys. So thank you guys for sending this for Christmas. Um, I believe this looks to be Max's camo. This is Emma Stone, Louis Shade, Jason's Aqua maybe, Moira's Dusty Rose, and this is probably um, Vincent's Highland Coup, I think, if I was to guess from my, my <laughs> leg on knowledge since I'm such a fan. But this is just like a little mini skein set that they threw in to say Happy Christmas to me, so thank you so much guys. And I think that I actually might put these in a shawl because I, I love how Vincent's colors look together. I think I could like a stripy shawl. I would love to make with that. And while we're here, I will show the last um, color of the Mysterious Forest set, which I would have gotten. So this is the last color um, from that club. This is the uh, Mysterious Deer, which was the third one, and this is Emma Stone is the mini, and this was with a gold sparkle, and it is absolutely epic. I actually have the whole trio here together, so I can show them to you. Hold on, let me hold them so that they're all nice. Do 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 do. Here you go. Ooh. It is hard. There we go, with the mini skeins. There you go. I keep saying there you go like I'm doing it but I'm not so yeah they're absolutely wonderful and epic I really want to make something and they they fit together so well like you could almost fade them couldn't you if you kind of hide the minis because they've got like green like they do match together really really well um my th thought is a shawl with all three just because I think the colors look so well together, even though they'd make wonderful socks as well. But I also want to, I try to, I, w I want everything I make to be wearable or things I actually wear. And because it's got the sparkle in it, I don't know how often I'd wear a sparkly shawl or do I make something that kind of would just be at home that would lay over the couch and be kind of something you just throw on your shoulders to keep yourself warm. Or do I make socks that I only wear at Christmas? I don't know. Regardless, I love the colors and I love the club and I'm any, any club the guys do, I will be jumping on, of course. So highly recommend all of those. Um, okay, the acquisition train is gonna keep running and this is, all, this is acquisition slash, where the hell have you been, Jonathan? So I'm going to run through everything I got on my travels, some, oh, that's not something for my travels. That's just a random skein of Mondine that is always floating around. This is, this is my life, guys. Like, you know, in any random bag in my flat, you can just find a skein of Mondine because you never know when you need to cast on a pair of socks. Anyway, so um, for Christmas, my mom got me some yarn. She went to the yarn store that in Cork. Um, well, the yarn section of a store called Vibes and Scribes in Cork, which if you've watched previous episodes, you would have known. She got me first another skein of the Glen C by Yarn Vibes, which is an Irish um, uh, yarn. This one is 100% natural Irish sweets mixed with uh, mountain sheep raised on Irish farms. This is a worsted weight and 100% Irish wool, so it's beautiful it does really remind me of home and remind me of Ireland so I think I have two other skeins of this as well and I think I would like to make like a cabled cowl of some sort with them all I think it would be like really really beautiful or like a cool worsted weight shawl like maybe the dustland 
by Stephen West or like a pure a pure joy some like textured shawl would I think be really beautiful with this so she got me a skein of that and then she got me a skein of hedgehog fibers from cork of course because she'd see me looking at it the last time we were there this is um hedgehog, hedgehog fiber sock yarn so this is uh do 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 90% merino, 10% nylon, and I believe it says machine washable. I assume it's superwash. And this is the color pollen, which is very like my vibe. I really, really enjoy this. And this would make like a nice textured sock, I think. But I'm really, really happy with it. She did well. She did well. Um, so that I got from my mom for Christmas, which is really, really nice. And I'm really happy with those. Thanks, mom. And yeah, so that was so I got that in Ireland. So that was the f these was the, this was the start. <laughs> so I had arrived into Ireland with my yesteryears and a curio sock on the needles, and yeah, I picked up. They started with two. Uh, bear in mind, this is ten days, two skeins already. Christmas, happy Christmas, Jonathan. These two. Where did we go next? Then I flew. I flew via Amsterdam, but unfortunately I was only there for two hours, so it wasn't enough time to stop at Stephen and Penelope. But 2022 is definitely the year. I go to Amsterdam every year, usually, so I'm, I'm going, <laughs> eventually. So, what was first? This guy. Yeah. So, then I flew to Minneapolis to where my, well, Minnesota, Saint, Minneapolis, St. Paul, where my brother lives, and I visited two yarn stores there. The first was the Yarnery, which is in St. Paul. And it is a beautiful store, like very my vibe, very my energy. Um, it was quite cool. There was like this super nice dude with a beard working there at the time. So I was like, this is awesome. Like this is, you know, not your normal yarn store or what should be the normal yarn store. And uh, as I walked in, there was, the, the, the guy was, um, the shop person was talking about what is local and what is like, you know, special to their store, which is like the first question I ask when I go to a yarn shop when I'm traveling is like, okay, what, what's local? What, what can I only get here? And so I picked up this. So this is Anthology Yarn Co. Interlude number two, Bluffland single flock yarn. This is it. What a color. What a color. Let's all just like take that in for a second. And shake your hands. There we go. So, this is fingering weight, approximately 100 grams, 400 yards. This is Rambouillet and Ile de France fleece from Nelson, Wisconsin, woolen spun in Mount, Ho Mount Horeb, Wisconsin, hand dyed in St. Paul, Minnesota. So this is like, this is, I went in and I was like, this is exactly what I'm looking for. This is a, this is like me, <laughs> you know, single flock yarn, non-superwash, hand dyed, rustic, woolen spun, everything that I want and need it to be. And this is something like, I would, I would get a sweater's quantity of this, but only one. So this, if you know of any cool, maybe a lacy shawl would be cool. If there, is there a nice single skein shawl in this with lots of eyelets that would, you know, but dark and moody? Absolutely love. Oh, and the color is Oxbow. And one thing I really love, if you're a stationery nerd like me, as you all know, I'm a big stationery nerd, they've used a, these are staplers that don't use staples. So yeah, loved it. Anthology Yarn Co. I'm very excited to knit with this. So that was that at the yarnery. Oh, and obviously, thank you for all the yarn store recommendations, guys. I took them all in. And I was only in uh, St. Paul for two days. And each day we went to a yarn shop because other than that, we were just at home. <laughs> so my brother and sister felt bad. They were like, well, you gotta do something. So like, let's just drive you quickly to the yarn shop. So we went to the two, two yarn shops. The other one we went to was Stephen B's. Yeah, Stephen B. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And I picked up two skeins there. So if you're counting, we're now up to five skeins. 
The first I picked up was Blue Fiber Company. And this one, I, this is 80% superwash merino, 20% cashmere, sock yarn. This is from Portland, Oregon. And this is the color Meowzeltoff. And it's very my vibe. I need to actually double check because I know this, I follow this, so the reason I got this is because I follow this dyer on Instagram and have done for quite a while. And so they do like UV activated yarn. I'm not sure if this one is. I'm sure it would glow quite cool under a UV light, but I really liked the colors. It's very much my energy and um, it's one of those, you know, they're not like local to St. Paul or Minneapolis, but because it's someone I'd followed for a while and not something I could readily get here, I picked this one up. So I was really excited about this one. And then, um, <clears throat> So Stephen B's is huge and there was tons of people. So the yarnery was like small-ish and um, I mean, I think small by American standards, by London standards, it would have been quite big, but it was smaller where Stephen B's was huge and there was yarn everywhere and there was like tons of sales staff and they were super kind and super helpful and I had like a nice chats with people and they were all super friendly and so... Picking something there was like quite difficult. The, the the Blue Fiber Company was pretty easy for me to choose because I kind of knew them already. And so I was shown around Stephen B's and I kind of like asked anything what's exclusive or what's like you can only get there. Um, there was quite a bit. In the end, ironically, I went for more Hedgehog Fiber sock yarn. And the reason was is that like there wasn't a because I'd already gotten the anthology yarn this color kind of spoke to me and I quite liked that it was something that was made in Ireland from Cork where I'm from but this is a exclusive colorway to Stephen B's called Be Fantastical so it's sock yarn it's the same base as the um, pollen that my mom got me and so I quite liked that it could be something that is a partnership almost between where I'm from and where my brother lives because my brother's lived there for over 10 years. So I just kind of, I kind of liked that. So it was more moody blues and purples. I have no idea how this one lit up with some speckles. But yeah, it's, you know, it just was what took me in the moment. So I was really happy with that. So that trip to Stephen B's was all blues. <laughs> blues and navies. So it was very interesting that like one store I had like single flock origin, rustic, and the other one was like color, whoa! <laughs> so if you're counting, I'm now up to five skeins on my trip. So I'm already up to this much. And I had, you know, not a huge, all of that plus the sweaters quantity plus socks. So we're really getting full and busy. And so that was two days in Minnesota and I left Minnesota and I went to Chicago. And so there I was very lucky to manage to get to Yarnify. There was lots of recommendations for Chicago, but the, some of the stores had closed. Some of the stores had, um, closed because of COVID, because people were, you know, they couldn't staff the stores. And then Yarnify was open on the first full day we were there and we went. And I'm so glad we did because the next day there was like a storm and it was like the day before New Year's. So they closed early a day. So I'm so glad that I went when I did because otherwise I wouldn't have gone to a single yarn shop in Chicago because I did try to go to Firefly, Firefly Fiber Company, I believe is the store name. Um, but they were closed on the day that I went. Um, they were open for Christmas hours on the day that I went, but then it was the new year, so they were closed, which was a shame. Not their fault, my fault. But if I hadn't gone to Yarnify that day, it would have been the only, I wouldn't have gone to any yarn shop in Chicago, which would have been a shame. Anyway. So I went to Yarnify, it was very, very quiet, it was a super nice store, really, really big. Same question, uh, asked like what's local here 
and um, I asked the name of the person that helped me and I completely forgot their name. And I feel bad, but I'm sorry. But if you ever see this, you were so kind and wonderful. So thank you for being so kind and chatting. Uh, so in the end, I picked up two skeins of uh, stitched together yarn. This is their Midcoast string. And this is, so this is odds and ends. So this is Targeeling Twist. So it's 80% Targi, 10% Bamboo, 10% Tossa, which I believe is a kind of silk or is a, I, oh no, it's not a silk. I think it's a, like a manufactured plastic, but it's made from natural materials, I believe. But this is odds and ends. So I'm assuming this is, so this is what I got. So they don't have color names because I believe they are odds and ends, which means they're like stuff that's left over spun together. And so this is one. So it's purples, kind of greens, grays. And then this one is like yellows and grays. And so I think they would actually fade together. Because you can see there's like the yellow and green, like they're kind of matching each other. So I would be interested to make something with like slip stitches. Maybe Andrew Maori, since this is like kind of basically like a barber, barber spot, barber pull spun a la, uh, oh my God. Spin cycle. So this is like spin cycle. So once I cake it up, I'll see where the colors are going. Once you look down the cake, like I showed you with the robin's egg skein earlier. Um, yeah, but I just, I really liked it. So these were the two skeins I picked up from Garnify, which is great. So I highly recommend that store. It was a really, really nice store. They had some nice bits in there and I was really, really happy with these. And that's also where I picked up that little uh, rainbow pin. And that actually reminds me that Stephen B's in Minneapolis has a little bit of a reverse. If you do ever visit, it is minutes up the road is the uh, memorial to George Floyd, where we went and um, spent a bit of time just to pay some respects, have a moment of silence. And it was shocking and moving and um, tragic and hopeful all at the same time. So just wanna take a moment to remind you that black lives still matter. So if you do go to Stephen B's, make sure you take um, a moment to go up the road and pay some respect to George Floyd. Um, so then that was all for yarn shops in Chicago. And I then managed to spend a wonderful afternoon in Chicago with, and if again, if you follow me on Instagram, you'd already have seen, I managed to spend some time with Michael from Peace for Peace Crafting and Caleb from Drowning in Yarn. I was so lucky and glad that three of us managed to find a time where we were all free to sit down for what ended up being like three and a half hours and felt like five minutes. And we just got to, for want of a better word, shoot the shit, <laughs> just put the world to rights and uh, just chat and have a great time. And so it was, yeah, you know, Michael was one of the very first people on YouTube to recommend me on his podcast. So it felt really like fun full circle at the end of the year that we got to like meet in person and hang out and just chat. And it was absolutely wonderful. It shows how, you know, the internet, you can make friends. And when you meet in real life, it's like your real friends. So don't let anyone ever tell you that just because your internet friends doesn't mean you're real friends. Um, yeah, and it was wonderful. We just, you know, chilled out, had a great time, laughed a lot. And it was just wonderful to meet these two wonderful people within the community and if you don't follow them and don't know them check them out they both make amazing content and are super super prolific talented knitters and Caleb the little 
little bitch, <laughs> he bought gifts. So he gave Michael a wonderful skein of tones from Brooklyn and Tweed, and he got me some Peace Fleece, you guys. So if you don't know what Peace Fleece is, it is a uh, wonderful, wonderful yarn made in the US, and it was actually one of the yarns I was looking for when I visited, but I don't think any of the stores I visited stocked it. So this is 75% Navajo Rambouillet and domestic fine wool and 25% mohair. And this is the worsted weight in the Porterfield Plum colorway. And their tagline is wool with purpose. And Caleb actually had with him a pair of mittens, which were the Tin Can Knits mittens, which he made convertible. So the top came over and he has um, notes on his website how to change the normal pattern to convertible mitts. So I think I'm actually going to do the same thing with this skein. So it'll either be a wonderful pair of mittens or it might be a hat. But it's, it, was, it was really cool to, to get a hold of Peace Fleece because it's one of those like wonderful American brands that I think is pretty difficult to come across here in the UK. So yeah, so if you couldn't tell, this is, this is what I came back with from my trip to Ireland and the States. It was absolutely wonderful. So thank you to Michael and Caleb for just being awesome and to all the iron stores for being generous and kind and helpful and to my mom, I love you. Thank you for birthing me. And so yeah, it was, it was a wonderful trip which is why I've ended up with a huge, huge, huge amount of acquisitions and which is why I am really gonna try not to buy anything for January and most of Feb. But chances are I'm going to a yarn festival in February, so we'll see, we'll see. All I know is I, like, I'm worried that I'm getting to that point where I have more yarn in my stash that I can knit my entire life, but we'll see. I digress. Um, yeah, so that's all the yarn acquisitions that I got since the last time I spoke to you. Okay, so the last bits that I'm going to touch on aren't yarn, but they are knitting related. I picked, I received, and I picked up some books um, for Christmas, and I just wanted to share them super, super quick. This is, this one I got from my sister-in-law, and this is uh, Nordic Knits with, Nordic Knits with Ber Berger Berger? I believe, I think it's this guy. And this book had been on my Amazon wish list for a little while. It's got beautiful like Nordic patterns and there's one in particular that I really wanted to make. So I want to make, so it's got like, like Salbu roses and things like that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Beautiful stranded color work, which is what I want to do more of. But this is the the show-stopping pair of mitts. They also have a pattern where it's like slippers, but yeah, it's like modern, cool Nordic mitts. So I received that as a wonderful gift and I'm excited to make some beautiful bits from that. The next thing I picked up has just been released and this is Knitting for Radical Self-Care by Brandy Cheyenne Harper, A Modern Guide. Uh, this was only released last week, week before. Like, it's like hot off the presses and I haven't had time, because I still have a bit of jet lag if I'm honest, you guys. I haven't had time to sit down and go through it, but I have followed Brandy on Instagram for a minute and she is like wonderful in every sense of the word, wonderful energy, wonderful aesthetic. I like just want to like live in her apartment because it's beautiful and like it looks like it's always so perfectly well lit and full of like great energy. And you know, knitting for me is definitely meditative and a self-care um I was going to say mantra, but a, a, a self-care tool for me and this is a wonderful book full of essays and thoughts and patterns and techniques. And what's the one that I, she was styling it on Instagram the other day and I was like, oh God, I do. There it is, the Sojourn shawl. It's 
beautiful and you can like wear it like this. I really, really like it. So I think I would love to make a, so this is light worsted weight. So I would love to make this in like some, one of the Garth Noor um, bases would be really nice, like a really rustic, um, but like big, I love it. So yeah, highly recommend. I can't wait to sink my teeth in. Like, I can recommend the patterns just from looking at them. And it's a great book for experienced knitters because her methods of construction are very well thought out and very different from anything I've ever seen. But also wonderful for beginners because it does take you through step by step how to do more or less everything with great photos and very well, very well designed. Highly recommend. And then finally, oh, well, there was Lina, which I already showed you, the latest issue, which I've already knitted from. And then finally, I picked up this book, which is A Treasury of Knitting Patterns by Barbara G. Walker. I feel like the three books are like an interesting compliment because you've got like, this is, was published in 1968 and it's just a, like a treasure trove of patterns. And so this is kind of like the past of knitting. Then Nordic Knits is such a like, you know, a bastion of knitting in Scandinavia, like that is so ingrained in the culture. So it's a super strong cultural thing. And then you've got like the future of knitting right here. So I liked that <laughs> these three books are like hitting on different parts of the, the, the community and world of knitting. But yeah, so this is, as it says, a treasure of knitting patterns. And the reason I picked this up is because I want to spend more time this year thinking about designing my own you know, garments and things for myself and just, you know, I feel like last year I definitely helped understand construction of garments and things I like to make and this has, you know, this has really motorbiked me into the future. <laughs> if you could hear that, sorry about that guys. So yeah, so this is, um, yeah, a really interesting and fun book to have to reference and be inspired by. So that's what it is. This is the first one and there's four treasuries in total. So I'm excited to collect the whole set throughout the year. Maybe once a quarter, I'll get another one. And so, yeah, that's it. Are you as tired as I am? But thank you so much for chugging along for this episode 11, the first full episode of 2022. And quick thank you to people recently who have shouted me out. The wonderful, wonderful ladies from Knit Inc. shouted me out recently, who I've followed for ages and I think I've shouted them out before. I, f I definitely feel a, like, kindred spirit with them because um, N Natasha is like a hand letterer and Laura actually used to do hand lettering. So I feel like we all have our like secret stationery nerddom as well. But yeah, the knitting girls are like amazing prolific knitters. And so thank you for shouting me out, ladies. And yeah, to anyone else who has shouted me out, I think there's a few other people that I can't even think of who mentioned me and I do appreciate, I do appreciate it a lot that we can expand the community and thank you for commenting. Please like and subscribe if you want to. Leave me a comment down below. I always ask what you're currently working on. And last episode, I think I asked, what is your selfish cast on? Because it was like that time of year where you're just about to be finished with gift knitting. Um, so if you're doing, a, if you finished yourself a cast on, let me know. If you're trying anything new for 2022, I want to know. And I just want to know how you're doing, how you're getting on, because it's been a minute. So let me know how you're doing. Um, I, reading comments is easy enough. Replying to comments could be a full-time job. So I have time now, a little bit of more of a relaxed New Year's, so I will have hopefully time to get back to everyone, but I always read and heart so that you know that I've seen it. Uh, so thank you for commenting, thank you for hanging out, and let's get excited for 2022 and the lots of new things that will be coming down the pipeline for that. So follow me, like me, comment me, tell me what's going on, and yeah, thank you so much for watching guys. See you next time, bye!